Hi, I'm Julie Robinson from the Hefner Museum of Natural History, and I'm here with Don Kohler. He is an excellent naturalist, a retired educator. And Don, what are we going to study about today? Today, we're going to study about prairies. Welcome to the Houston Woods Restored Prairie. Prairie Systems Ohio, you can get argument between those and wetlands as to which were most vulnerable, which were more um, destroyed. About 90% of Ohio wetlands have been destroyed. Prairies, we're down to about two to 5% of prairies are still left. There were never a huge number of prairies in Ohio. And you might be asking yourself, what is a prairie doing in Ohio? Let me tell you and get you a quick start of why we have prairies in Ohio. We have the ice age come through, glaciers melted back, the original trees started coming back, but we went into a very, very dry time between four to 8,000 years ago when trees could not stand the temperature or the dryness. Only place you'd find trees around waterways. So prairie grasses and prairies expanded eastward through Illinois, where you still have some prairie remnants, Indiana, you still have prairie remnants, and even Ohio still has some original prairie remnants. From that time period, it was very dry, and prairies like have a lot of grasses, and they don't need much moisture. moisture. And they established themselves. What you're looking at here is a replanted prairie, and you get some idea what the prairie landscape will look like in Ohio. They were not large prairies, they were small ones. Gradually, the weather started to change, moisture came in, rain fell, prairies could not handle the tree competition as the trees, because the seeds hit the ground, rain fell, they grew up along the edges. That would make a prairie leave quicker than anything else. The shading, prairies could not handle shade. And prairies would have been out of Ohio except for one group of people, the Hopewell, the Adena, the Fort Ancient, the Woodland Indians. The Native Americans liked prairies because you could find deer and other grazing animals in the prairies and they'd be easy to locate they would light this, catch it on fire, force the other animals to go in the direction where they would hunt them and have uh, their best hunters there to kill them for winter food. Well, by burning, you burnt the top part of trees. That's where the living tissues are and you kill the trees. The prairie living tissue is underground. That's where the majority of the prairie plant actually is. Some of these prairie plants might have roots that go down five, 10 feet, some of them even 15 feet. Well, as they were pushed out of Ohio, Europeans came in. And they looked at these prairie areas and said, what good are they? And basically ignored them. The trees started coming in. Some prairies were plowed up once, the John, once John Deere uh, made the molding plow, which broke the prairies out west and were used in Ohio to break through the prairies because those root structures held together so well, the original plows did not break them. They just bounced off of them. And these root structures would be down so deep and hard, but the steel plow would destroy them. So these prairies now became part of farms. And the farmers loved it because they found out a prairie is nothing like a field. It's great growing. So very few prairies were left in Ohio. Prairies left in Ohio in the 1900s, late 1900s would have been cemeteries, railroad areas, and there is some other ones in wastelands. So these prairies that you see here are man-made. It's now April. There's not much growing as you can see. Prairies have a tendency to grow from the ground level up. So what we would be looking for in a natural prairie would be plants growing along the ground. And we have a few. We have one here, which the stems gave it away. This one is gray-headed coneflower. And it looks like a black-eyed Susan, but the petals droop down. It has this type of leaf. Behind it, we have a purple head coneflower, Echinacea. Prairies are known for their grasses. In this prairie, we have um, big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian panic grass, um, switch grass. All these grasses would be in here, but right now they're very low. Prairies die down in the winter time, and then they start blooming and start growing. If we were being a natural prairie, we'd have blooming plants here. And as the blooming period continues, we would continue up further, 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 further. And some plants like prairie dock and compass plant, their blooming heads are up eight to 10 feet. One more thing I want to mention about prairies 
is they are the climax community. They will not change under most conditions. They are what you would expect to find in the prairie. You wouldn't get trees and everything else growing as you have around here because this is a man-made prairie. But the prairies do not change as long as nothing changes such as weather. And the weather is what changed Ohio to cause the prairies to start to fall away. Not only are prairies useful for the flowers, wildlife loves it. You get very special animals in here, special types of sparrows, warblers. There's even a prairie warbler that likes to come. I was hoping we'd hear them today. You get a lot of special animals that do live in the prairies too. So go out, enjoy a prairie, and have fun.